this is what I'm trying to say. Like I, I'm at a point now, like with myself, like I feel comfortable in myself to to kind of take this step, and you know, I'm just kind of excited. I don't know what's gonna happen, but um, so I got right now. Memes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, good memes to the people. I got Here's I got meme. I was like, guys, my me- my memes in my name. <laughs> <laughs> with more to come. With a lot more yeah. to come. <laughs> Welcome back to the Brudette Podcast, our holiday Christmas Hanukkah edition. That's right. Woo. Uh, tonight it's just us, me, Cole, Evan Blum. Evan Blum. Evan Blum. I've been pronouncing your name wrong <laughs> for the last little year and a half, I guess. I'm a gentleman. Okay, well, thank you for being so kind to me. Um, yeah, we wanted to catch up, and uh, you know, we've had a couple episodes under our belt now. We've talked to some people in the industry, yep. kind of recollect ourselves. You guys have a lot going on. You know, I got some stuff going on. Kind of catch up and uh, you know, see what's happening. Yeah, what's going on, Rich? Yeah, I um, quit my job. <laughs> so yeah. that's happening. Yeah, I no longer work at Victory. Um, it's been something that I've been thinking about, you know, for a while. It's it feels like, you know, from an outside perspective that maybe all these things have something to do in common, like this podcast and, you know, uh, you know, I'll get into it, but like my friend, Saint Allison opening up her bar, Brilliant. but you know, really kind of all these things were kind of independent of each other. And then it just kind of all fell into place, you know? So I've, I've been very open with victory and all my other employers over the years that, you know, my end goal was always to open up my own brewery and you know while I was working there I was always kind of dedicated to it kind of you know married to those breweries and I felt like you know I'm I'm at a point in my life where I I'm ready mentally emotionally you know I've I seen we just had Allison on but I've I am so close to them and I, I saw them from square zero start this thing and open it and yeah now i'm at a point where you know i'm kind of trying to do the same thing like i'm trying to open up a brewery a brewery is essentially a bar that produces its own goods and i've i watched them you know build this business from square zero and i was so close to it and it's like i just kind of i saw this roadmap of like i know what i need to do to make this happen and Mm -hmm. it's been my dream to open up my own brewery and it just, it made sense with everything happening in my life right now that I just kind of sat down with my parents. I'm like, I'm, I'm going to quit my job. Like I, this is something that I need to do. I mean, Evan, you haven't quit your job, not yet, but like Evan has quit his job and you went through the same circumstance, you know, a couple of years ago. And it got to the point where I could not, my desire to open up a brewery was stronger than my desire to represent victory. And it, I had this opportunity where Sam and Allison were opening up a bar so I could step away and I can bartend for them. So I will be bartending at the Boozy Mutt. Um, we had this opportunity now where we're podcasting. So I'm able to kind of step away, but still kind of be in the game. You know, we talked to the Carbon Copy guys and you know, this is a very normal thing. When people go to open up a brewery, they go and work in, you know, the, you know, service industry. And I've never been a bartender before. And I know that when I open up my own place, you know, probably 90% of my revenue is going to be sold over the bar. Yeah. And, you know, I'd be, the fact that I don't have any experience there, I think I need experience Mm -hmm. to open up my own place to be successful. And it just, it made a lot of sense for me to step away. And I, I needed to, I, this is going to sound so dumb, but I've thought about this for a while. It's, um, and I, I, I don't like Jordan Peterson. I, this <laughs> a very weird thing. I don't like Jordan Peterson. I think a lot of his ideas are crazy, but he has this idea about like people, when people become adults, they have to kill this mental, he says you have to kill your parents, which is <laughs> insane. But what he's talking about is like killing the construct, the mental construct in your head that you have something that's looking out for you. 
And it's like when you kill that, it's like that's when you become an adult where like you are then your own person. And it, it got to the point where like even if I wanted to like kind of start to make steps of my own to open up my own place, I, I was always felt like I was dedicated to victory. Yeah. And it's not just victory, it's anybody I've worked for. And like I love victory. I'm feel like I'm leaving there on a good note. And you know, it, it has nothing to do with what they're doing. But I needed to put it behind me. Busy. And you know, I had the opportunity now to step away to bartend and um it just kind of all fell into place. And you know, I don't I don't know what's gonna happen. You know, I've taken this leap of faith. I have no financial security right now. You know, I have bills to pay, I have a mortgage and you know, I'm hoping that things will work out. Um, you know, we're making a little bit of money here ads wise, but like not enough to support my mortgage, you know, but it's, it's something that, you know, at some point I, I needed to do it's, Perfect. this is my entire life has been kind of based around me eventually opening up my own place. So yeah. I don't know what the future holds. I know that in the next six months, I have kind of a plan of attack about what I want to do and kind of get into that a little bit. But I know that, um, I feel really good about this right now. It's been weighing on me for the kind of the past year about something that I've been thinking about. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I feel like it's been taking up like, you know, 50, 80% of my mental capacity just thinking about this is something that I wanted to do. And I can't talk about, you know, all these people, about it with all these people in my life mm -hmm. that I'm dealing with every day. Yeah. And, you know, just stepping away kind of lifted this weight off me where I'm like, as much as like my life is a total shit show right now, it's, I feel so good. Like, I feel like the monkey is ripped off and I can like openly talk about this. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I think I'm going to open up my own brewery. I want to open up my own production facility where I'm making my own goods. I mean, that's what I'm good at. I'm not trying to make this long-term contract brewery. Like as much as I've learned a lot about marketing beer and selling beer over the past couple of years, and especially in the last couple of months, kind of doing this, you know, my bread and butter is making beer. And that's what I need to be doing as a career. So eventually I want to be opening up my own location. Um, you know, by me doing that, I need to find a location. I need to get investors. I need to do all these things that aren't overnight things. So in the meantime, my plan is when the new year starts, create an LLC, create my name, create my brand, get a brewing license, and start contract brewing. Mm -hmm. In the meantime, you know, kind of using some of these local people and kind of moving on from there. Um, but yeah, it is, it feels great to do this. I know that you kind of, you've done this about a year ago. And um, yeah, I don't know. It, uh, it, it's insane. My, it feels like my whole life is happening like 10,000 miles an hour right now. It's like, it's, it's crazy. Yeah, I mean, I have to say, we went to New York together and you are so incredibly perceptive and you're so articulate with with the beer industry with what you like with what you don't like and we, we stepped away learning so much from you and just that one like sitting if there's one person i know is super passionate about you know the industry and like, the creation it's you so it's, it's super exciting that you you're making that that change and i guess in your eye you know you don't want to live with regrets yeah and you know stunt your growth and you know you are always networking and you're on this podcast talking to people about what they do the best and you're seeing how passionate they are about what they create the labels they make the the things they put into the beer the different hops and i mind that everybody that's on here also does the same exact jump into what they're yeah. doing everybody has to make it at some point and it's like it just i needed to rip the band-aid off it made total sense. I mean, I just saw my best friends do this. This is, uh -huh. and now I'm kind of involved with this startup and it's like, it just, it got to the point where it needed to happen. You know, like sometimes like, you know, out of college, I'm like, I'll, I'll work in the industry for two years. I'll work in the industry for six months. I'll be ready to go. Uh -huh. <laughs> and it just kept like, the more I learned, the more I was in the industry, it was just like, the more I realized I didn't know and I wasn't ready. Yeah. But nobody's <clears throat> ready. You know, nobody's, actually ready to do it at some point you just have to do it and i had an opportunity that i could step away and you know i'm doing it yeah do you did you feel like you were like lacking fulfillment when you were working for no, a the, larger brewer the the job i had at victory so tim uh is taking over tim's the new brewer there 
um, pretty much seamless transition. Like I left and or I gave them my two weeks and he instantly started training with me, Tim Dean. And, you know, I, I told him from the beginning, it's like, this is the best job I've ever had. And it, it is the best brewing job in the city. You know, there might be more prestigious jobs at like yards or some of these larger breweries. Um, but I was given so much freedom to do whatever I wanted there. Um, and it was a way for me, you know, every single day I got to stand up in front of like unique people, you know, customers, wholesalers, you know, social media influencers, you know, famous people would come in Correct. and they, I was representing victory, you know, to them, I was victory and you know, it was a, it's an awesome brand. You know, I, yeah. I grew up even before I got into beer, I knew who Bill and Ron were They're there's a reason why Victory is so big yeah. and why it's so successful. And it's because of Bill and Ron and the company that they built. And, you know, I got to work with them and like, I'm lucky enough to like call Bill a friend, you know, Ron, like I know him pretty well. And it's like, I got to work side by side with these people and to actually go out and like represent them was awesome. Sure. And essentially to like kind of put my stamp on Victory was, you know, I'm proud of that. Yeah. So like, I, I'm happy that I worked there. And I think, you know, Tim or anybody else who gets that opportunity to work there, it's it's the best job. You get the full support of victory behind you. You get this creative freedom to do what you want. And you get you get put in this spotlight. You know, like, I, what I thought that job was was not what I was expecting, what it actually was. Like, you are, everybody's looking at you all the time. You know, because you're the only production member there, you know, and they are so busy all the time, you get so much attention. And it's like a lot of the work there is, is not just production work. It's you representing I, Victory. I don't know if we specifically have talked about your position at Victory before, but you were the head brewer of the Center City location in charge of all the innovation brews on site. Yeah, so I, I would essentially, I was essentially like a pub brewer, but because Victory is so large and established and they don't have like, they're not uh, Iron Hill. Brewer. Like they... People, even though I was like making these pub brews, people were treating them like they were victory releases. Yeah. And it was like this very cool opportunity to kind of go on and just like kind of establish myself yeah. and like put my stamp on like the victory brand. And, you know, like I'm grateful that I got to work there, you know, and I learned a lot there. Um, you know, like, like I said, like me leaving had nothing to do with that position or any of my managers or anything to do with the company. It was, it was purely, I needed to go do my own thing. And, you know, the desire to do that was yeah, stronger absolutely. than the desire to, you know, represent victory. When did you start to feel like you could, you could potentially open up something over your own? I mean, I still don't, I mean, I, I, I feel like it I can do it. Is. Yeah. Like it's, it's never the perfect timing, you know, like I, I don't know what my paycheck is going to be like, you know, I'm a bartender now and like I'm getting yes. this and I have a mortgage to pay, you know, like it's, yeah. I think the question more though, I mean, is when you were working at victory, when did you have the realization that you feel like you have the confidence in yourself enough that you, you could potentially leave and start to build your journey towards building it's, it's, it. I had no idea what it was. And Sam, he just, he's never done this before and he just went out and did it. Yeah. And I just watched him and Allison build this thing. It was insane. Yeah. So, you know, like from like square one, like going from like an idea to then building it, like I've, I've never seen anything like that before. So it was kind, kind of seeing that happen. And then when they went public and they got all this attention for it, yeah. Um, I could just, I just kind of realized like, oh shit, this is like, like even when he was doing it before that, I like I always felt like you know this was just something that he was kind of doing on the side, and then like it became very real for him. Like other people saw him doing it, and I watched him build it from square one. Yeah, like, I, I keep saying it, but like it was incredible. So seeing that, and then you know talking to all these other people, and I've always felt confident myself to like brew beer and market beer and like create brands and stuff. But I, I don't have any business experience, you know. Ever since I graduated college, even though I have a business degree, the only thing I've done is brewing. Yeah. And I just kind of, like, saw this in-depth look of, like, how a business operates, how, you know, these projected, like, P&L statements were run. And it just, it made sense to me. And, you know, I, I seriously didn't think about how it was going to work, but it just, 
I don't know what exactly I'm going to do, but I've just seen this happen. And I'm at a point in my life where like, I'm, I'm comfortable enough to do this. And you know, I'm, I'm happy that I did, but it's, yeah, there's a long road ahead and it's like a long, uncertain road. You yeah. Know? I mean, first off, congrats. Congrats. And thanks. I mean, they, congrats. Everyone's telling me congrats, but like nothing's happened besides I quit my job so far, but I'll tell you what happened. Yeah. There's a mentality shift that you have to get to even yeah. be able to do that. Yeah. And that's what happened. And that's a large, like large step yeah, of yeah. that journey that you're like going on and you're going to tackle. So it, that's exciting. That's like, that's really exciting and that's fun to watch. Yeah. 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 And I'm, I'm excited. It's, you know, I, I've seen, you know, kind of what you guys have been doing, like with all this, you know, building up like this new craft beer era where it's like in touch with the younger generation. And, um, you know, a lot of what people are saying about like craft beer is dead and like, you know, it's a dying industry because it, it's sunk from like what, 17 to 13%. Like in my, I don't see that, you know, like what I'm seeing is like the people that are doing things right are being very successful. You know, there's breweries that have opened up in the last three years. New Ridge, where is it, Nutrio, opened up three years ago. They're gonna sell 60,000 barrels next year. I wouldn't call that a failing industry. No. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Human Robot is one of the best breweries in the country. They just opened up three years ago. You know, we just had Carbon Copy on. They're selling a ton of beer. Like, in my mind, it's not that it's a dying industry. It's an oversaturated industry with a lot of people doing some weird stuff. And you're seeing a lot of the failure as yeah. opposed to the success. And people are talking about that more. But I, I don't see it as a failing industry. Yeah. And, I mean, I, I, something that I hear all the time. So, man, I've, like, I've been on this journey for probably two years now. I quit my job about a year ago yeah. to do this full time. And this is something that it's simple to me. I find passion in doing this. It's not about me joining and like me and Cole joining the the craft beer boom time of what craft beer is. Yeah. Just joining that it's No, I like the way that I see craft beer or the way that we see craft beer, like that's kind of how we want to show it. Like yeah. that's, that's exciting. And while we're in this place, we hear all the time that, oh, well, craft beer and Gen Z doesn't really like Gen Z is not really into craft beer. And to me that, that is the most frustrating statement. I'm not going to name any names, but no, it's craft beer isn't marketing correctly to Gen Z. Absolutely. People, I think sometimes miscalculate, uh, you know, brew that as a, creators they do social media creators you guys aren't creating excitement about craft beer. the excitement is there it's just yeah. not being shown well and or shown to the correct people or shown in the correct manner and you guys are kind of like taking that and running with it and it's like yeah. i feel the same exact way that like i think a lot of people are jaded and there's a lot of like totally. negativity in the craft brewing world and yeah. i think that those people are like totally off I completely agree. And that's, you know, there's so many things though, just daily that we see that gets me so excited for the craft beer industry. I mean, just the other day we saw, um, bone saws opening up their own for uh, a brewery. It's called like the pilot room. It's all plain themed, like plain style, like, or just, um, the, the beer names are probably named after planes and like, there's a plane in the, yeah, it's awesome. Like, and, like, and a big thing we see with like the trends of like Gen Z and millennials, they want experiences, mm -hmm. you know, and that's an experience. And that's yeah. like that is like I always say it's like Disney. Like, some breweries are like Disney World, the like attractions, and there's no like the restaurants can, can have great uh, ambiance and everything, but breweries it's so open ended. You, it's really whatever you want to do with it. You want to make it about planes on a, on a runway? You can do that. We, we just had John Old on it. The episode's going to come out after this of Philadelphia Brewing. Philadelphia Brewing hasn't changed what they're doing in 18 years. They're still around. and all, if You can say what you want about them, but they're, they're doing their thing. They're one of the largest breweries in the city. And a lot, I feel like a lot of breweries are, they feel like they need to constantly be chasing the thing, constantly be reinventing themselves. And it's not about... You don't need to be reinvent. They're wasting their money. They're spinning their tires. They just don't know how to market. So like the fact that they're not getting attention is not, they're not doing the right thing. Yep. It's they're not marketing it correctly. They need to focus on what they're doing. They need to focus on what, the, you know, they're good at 
how they're unique in their own right, not mm-hmm. copying other people. Yeah. And let people like you show them how to then show how unique and cool they are. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. In, in Philadelphia Brewing, we just recently went to for the first time in the Peacock Room. Yeah. And oh my God, what a cool brewery, man. And even the taste room them, themselves is expanded, has changed in the last couple yeah. of years, but they're still true to themselves. And yep. yeah. like, like we talked about last episode, like that whole area is exploding in the next couple of years. That taste room is going to be so Packed. popular. Ooh, right. I mean, like, yeah. yeah, anyone that's listening that's ever been there, it's like a super old brewery from like the 1800s that they moved into. It's super vintage, like a fireplace going. Like it's such a cool place to bring people into Philly if you love history and everything. Um, it's, yeah, it's just, it's awesome. So there's so, so many places in Philly it's su- that are super historic as well, but I mean, also awesome experiences. So it's such a huge variety. And that's what makes our job pretty easy in some ways is we can go to so many different breweries and so many different experiences. You know, it's not like, yeah. We went to this place, it looks the same. We went to this place, it looks the same. But every place we go has its own feel. Yeah. Um, feel like the neighborhood or feel of the, like what's the in the brewer's mind, what he's passionate about. There's so many different ways that they, like, so many different angles they come at it from it. It's really and cool. There's so many angles that then we, I think, like we can like showcase yeah. that from. Exactly. And like something I hear a lot too, it's it breweries all have to run their own social media. From from our eyes, and that's that's a hard thing to do, especially when you're working at the same place every time. And I think that's why us showing like all the stuff, all the new stuff in your area is really fun. And that, that mean I that mean that makes our job fun. Yeah. And I think that shows out while we do what we're doing. Also. Yeah. And you know the the craft beer industry is I I mean. My, my my friend, he's like, hey, I'm going to the mountains, we're all looking for a brewery. Like, any idea where to go? You know, and it's always, I, I always, I get asked all Dude. the freaking time. I mean, it's, it's, you know, I enjoy it. It gets a little annoying. I get a lot of text. But, like, it's, <laughs> people go places and they're like, where can I, what, what brewery can I go to? It is a way of connecting to that community. So, it's, I, I, I makes sense. I mean, like, it's cool to go to a local place, find that local brewery that you've never, from a place you've never been to. Talk to the bartender. Probably lived there for a really long time. There's yeah. a lot of stories to tell. You know, it's it's cool. Dude, I went to Vermont for the first time maybe like two months ago. And in my friend group or in our group, like I am the brewery guy. But besides being the brewery guy, they took me to four different breweries just because that's what there was to do in the area. Like that itself. And these guys are 24 years old. That's Gen Z at the ta- at, at the, the beginning of it. And I see that I'm like, it's it's not it's not the breweries, it, it, it's not the it's not the generation, it's the way you approach it. The product is there, you know. It's not like it's a bad product. Mm-hmm. It's just people aren't marketing it correctly. People aren't kind of showing it off, and you know, I, I don't like this negative idea I agree. Of, of craft beer. Yeah, yeah, yeah I think it's, like, same it's same. hurting, and I think that yeah, I people are jaded online. And they write all these negative things on like these like meme posts and like these meme pages and, like write these crazy things about like you know it just to me it sounds like old men yelling at clouds and it's like <laughs> yeah. there's people that like it's not like it was in 2015 when it was growing 20 percent every year like you know get over yourself like you think like you doing nothing and like it just naturally going 20 percent is like normal that's not normal for yeah. the industry it's, it's like not normal for any industry, industry now. And it's, you know, just because you're not keeping up with the times, just because you're not doing stuff, doesn't mean that, you know, crap beer is dead. Yeah. You know, there's all these places. Neutro. Literally three years old, 60,000 barrels this year. That's insane. insane. That is insane. Yeah. I, and I think that is maybe a pretty good segue into something that we're putting together where the, the main goal from for us in the beginning of starting this was to get people into these breweries that are exciting to us. Like... The most recent video we put out was Crab and Punishments, a make great beer, all themed in like Russia. And you know, there's so many cool, you know, we've already talked about so many different cool experiences you can have um, with just Philadelphia with the brewery scene, but we want to make it as easy as possible for people to bounce around these breweries and get a feel for how incredible this scene is. Um, and we had this idea of putting together like a passport where someone can have to just pay one upfront flat fee and they can hit 
few of our, our favorite breweries that we think are worth checking out in Philadelphia to really get you, I guess, integrated um, and acclimated into the scene. So Into the scene, a pretty, like, base, like, go try, go look and see what's in your neighborhood. So we're partnering with around 20 breweries that are specifically in Philadelphia with our partner, Let's Rally. So we're really excited to, like, put this all together. And yeah. It's going to be a two-month-long passport. Each place you go to, you can get a free beer at. Um, so it's it's super exciting. And it's super, I don't know, it's something that I think I would fucking love yep. if, if I saw that. And I think that's kind of the idea. We want to make it accessible, easy to go to, and exciting. Yep. Can we talk about Let's Rally then a little bit? You Let's know, talk You guys about are wa- working with Let's Rally. Let's Rally app on the App Store. R A L L I E, but it's <laughs> it just makes perfect sense that you guys are working with them because they are they take people like you guys or anybody else kind of in the city that's doing fun stuff and they kind of show them like what's happening. So you can put in, yeah. you know, you say you're going out with like eight people. You can go on the app. You put going out with eight people and like kind of what you want to do: restaurants, bars, breweries, whatever you want to do, and kind of tells you what to do. But it just makes sense that you guys are partnering with somebody like this Dude, because so what lucky. you guys do is that you guys take these things and are kind of showing the world, you know, what's available in craft beer. Yep. And what's what's let's rally is kind of doing the same thing with kind of everything, and it you're just kind of this yeah. niche version of that within this larger scope of what they're doing. And it just makes perfect sense. Yeah, yeah. we are so we're so fortunate um, yeah. for the Let's Rally team. And that's um, so well said. Too. Yeah, so well said. Um, yeah, it's a great app to just figure out something to do over the weekend. Uh, there's always that person in the friend group that's like, "What are we doing this weekend?" Yeah, and they make it way easier. But yeah, also and they so partner with experts like you guys yeah. to say, "Look, these are the breweries that you should go to. All these places are cool places. And by the way, you get a discount when you go to any of them." Yep. yep. And the seamless, like he and their team is, they're making it such a seamless integration um, for the, the brewery passport, where it's all integrated into the app. Um, this QR code, you're gonna walk up, scan for the pour. Super easy. There's, you know, everything's geo, um, like location. Like it's gonna have your location, so it's gonna know exactly where you are. It just makes it so easy. <laughs> it's like yeah. we we, we had this idea and we met their team and it was like a match made in heaven. Like two favorite things: yeah. not putting any effort into anything and <laughs> drinking with my friends. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, we're we're, we're incredibly grateful. Um, and you know, I think this event. Or in the, with Pettis Passport, um, it's called Crafted in Philly. Yeah, on it. Make sure nice. Yeah, that. good we, plug. We, good we, plug. We, yeah, I think we're calling it like our like. <laughs> I don't know. Like, there's a new logo. Name. It's like the prototype <laughs> name. was like the <laughs> Brewed at Passport, but it's Brewed. It's it's um, Crafted, Crafted in, in Philly. Philly. Um, and logo will pop up now. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, hopefully you can yeah. figure that one out <laughs> but uh yeah I mean it, listen it's for it's for people that um love craft beer people that have, have been drinking craft beer for a very long time you know we're not ter- you know we're talking about Gen Z and Millennial but of course the people that love have, have been loving the craft beer scene in Philadelphia I mean even say you. I'm we're not hosting this podcast and I, I don't I haven't been to a lot of these places you know yeah, like, yeah. and a lot of that is just like it's not on my radar or I'm just not thinking about it but if it's Right in my face, I'm gonna do it. Yep. So, like I said, for the craft beer lovers that have loved it for 20 years, but it's also for people. This is a really cool thing to do on your weekend. Um, like there are so many cool experiences you're gonna have in Philly, and so many different places you can explore as well at the same time through the craft beer scene. Everyone loves drinking on the weekend. You're gonna do it anyways. Might as well help something local. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And it's exciting. And experience some like awesome spots. Everybody's got its own personality. I mean, that's that's what we love about this this business. And so. the craft beer is really, really good too. So yes. beer is good. <laughs> beer is good. So <laughs> nice. Yeah. So, but I don't know what else. Like, we got some Christmas beers here. I mean, this is our holiday episode, so I think that's pretty fun itself. Yeah, I just learned that you were telling me that the Christmas beers are all like a super high percentage, <laughs> which yeah. We, we so we, we start to, like grabbing these beers. We all got these Christmas beers, um, and I, I started drinking. I'm like, wow, okay, this, this tastes great. But 
I can tell it's strong. It's like a nine point two percent. Here's the ten. <laughs> Here's the nine point eight. Nine point eight. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. I mean, Christmas holidays the most stressful time of the year. As much as the greatest time of the year, it's the most stressful. It is. And sometimes, you know, you're with your family or with your extended family. You don't see too or, often. Or in-laws or something. Yep. Somebody said something crazy <laughs> and you're like, I just, I need to drink three beers in one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Speed up the process a yeah, little bit exactly. here. Yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, just winter beers, you know, it's a little cold out. Slap on a little uh, beer jacket. I think it just kind of makes sense. Also, a lot of the Christmas beers are like these stouts and like kind of spice stouts that are a little bit stronger. Yeah. But uh, yeah, my uh, my yearly Christmas routine is wake up, drink some Pilsners, some light beers, mix in like a sour here and there. And about 4 p.m., I start drinking the heavy stouts. <laughs> drink a couple of them. And then about 8 p.m., you know, start hitting the hard stuff, you know, whiskey, <laughs> something like that. And then pass out about 10 p.m. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you pass out around like 2 p.m., man. You, you're starting early. He's no. a brewer. It's okay. Yeah, that's yeah. True. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's great. Yeah. I mean, it um, makes sense, man. As it gets, as it gets cold, start uh, up in the APV. I think it's crazy. It's a little off topic, but like... I just learned how to ski recently, and every everybody's drinking on the ski slopes. Yeah. The amount of craft beer I've seen, just like this, when you're on the ski lifts, you'll see a giant trash can of people that they know people are drinking, so they'll throw their cans. Skiing is scary. If you just like buzz yourself a little bit, it's like playing beer pong. You're always a little bit better when you're (laughs) drunk. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. (laughs) What's what's the like? What craft beer is in the trash can? It's a good question, man. Um, not in a, not in a like bad way, but like in a finish the craft beer sort of way. Yeah, I mean, if I was to bring one <laughs> to uh, the slopes, I mean, I know we got this guy. He's Bear, snowboarding. Bear <laughs> Creek last year had Victory Six Point and New Trail with their craft brewer beers. Um, I know because I was yeah. drinking them the entire time. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I normally go for. I know this is disgusting. But I get drink Bud Light and Fireball. That's dude, it's always the shooter. It's always, it's <laughs> I've always never heard that combo. I'm really embarrassed oh, to say oh, that, oh, but oh, okay. I don't know. I feel like every single time I go skiing, it's just like yeah. six Bud Lights in the pants, a couple Fireball shots. Yeah, I know we were, talk, we were talking about Vermont earlier. Yeah, um, I guess I'm bringing it up again here with the like every, I go skiing up in Killington and Long Trail, right? Long Trail is the, the brewery up there. Uh, it's like no, on yeah. every tap. Uh, yeah, it's okay, but that's always what I'm drinking when I get like in the cab. Did you all cozy and just like sip on that like long shot? Vermont has some pretty good craft breweries. It's like one of the least populated Where? states of uh, Vermont. Oh, of it Vermont. has the best breweries. It's it's one of the brewery least capital of the United States. It really is. One of the least populated states in America. It's the second the least populated has the best breweries. What's up with that, guys? Yeah, wait. They the, breed, they breed them, some in the water. Heady Toppers from uh, there, and they've won. Best beer. Um, yeah, I mean, they basically invented the hazy IPA. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 wild, and I forget where else uh, we went. Von Trapp. Yeah, I realized they were up there. Yeah, Von, I, we went to Von Trapp, and they recently just did a collab with Human Robot, and I was like, holy shit, I've learned about you guys because of Human Robot. Yeah. I'm like, now I'm here. I know they're a big place too. Cold weather places, I think, always make good beer because it's like it's naturally cold out. And like a lot of times. Brewing equipment has a hard time like keeping up with that load, the refrigerant load, and you know if places are cold, they don't have to deal with that a lot. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I don't know. I feel like most yeah, cold maybe. places have good beer. And I mean, this, yeah, I mean, the West Coast too. You know, I mean, they're. I feel like the West Coast IPAs definitely. Yeah, but then you get it, the hazies. That's interesting. I, I didn't know that it was like very much predominantly. I'm um, brewed in like the Vermont area. You say. Well, West Coast is West Coast IPAs, right? So they make like the bitter, you know, Lagunitas type IPAs with their resinous and stuff, and then like East Coast New England IPAs would be like the fruitier, hazy IPAs. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. Where now it's just everyone makes everything, but mm-hmm. you know, that's kind of what they talk about. What's your favorite beer to make? To make hazy IPA because it's the easiest, but. Um, <laughs> I like lagers the best. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Hazy IPA is definitely the easiest. There's like so much hops in it that it's just like, you know, you're using the right as long as you use the right yeast and like brew days right, you know, it tastes great. <laughs> but yeah. have you made a lot of Christmas beers or like holiday beers? 
Um, I made some at Victory. Actually, Flying Dog had some crazy stuff. We had a beer called Family Drama. It was a 10.2% Pilsner. It's a great name. Um, I don't know how well it tastes, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> it was something that got you drunk. Um, yeah, I made some Christmas beers. I, I don't especially... I mean, I'm drinking Christmas beer right now, but I mostly, you know, like I said, start off with light beers and sours on holidays and then kind of move into in the Christmas beers and I'm a little bit drunk. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so this is just talk about this beer. I brought the Hardywood yep. and the St. Barnabas. So I told you this before we started. So what most people consider the best beer in the world, you know, obviously taste is subjective, so it doesn't make any sense. But what's for a long time was always considered the best beer in the world was uh, West Blue and Twelve, which is a Trappist Monk brewery. And you know, for most of the time that what I'm going to get all these dates messed up, but for like a hundred years, a couple hundred years, whatever it was, West Bluearn, the monk, the Trappist monastery was not making their own beer. It was made by St. Barnabas. Interesting. So okay. about 30 years ago, again, I'm, the dates might be a little off, but at some point West Bluearn <laughs> took over actually making their own beer. So they started making their own beer, selling it, and it's supposed to be like the best beer in the world. And it's like it's sold in wooden cases, and then you can only get one case per day. You're not allowed to resell it, all this other nonsense. But now St. Barnabas 12 that you can find at almost every bottle shop in the country made that beer with that recipe for a long, long time. I don't know the, the number of years. So... The best beer in the world, West Wear and Twelve, they weren't even making it. So probably the people that were making it for that long are probably a little bit better at making it. You can probably buy the best beer in the world, West Wear and Twelve, aka St. Barnabas Twelve. At it might, I think it might be St. Barnabas Ten, whatever it is. It's like it is the same exact beer as West Wear and Twelve, and you can buy it at in most places around the country, any basically bottle shop around the country. That is. Really interesting. Yeah. Cold so, but this is yeah. St. Barnard's Christmas sale. So I picked that up because I wanted to like tell everyone, like, you know, as much I've never had St. West Weir in 12. Yeah. I'm sure it tastes delicious. <laughs> and like, I'm talking shit on it and like, I probably shouldn't be. But, you know, at some point I do want to try it, but it is just the same beer as the St. Barnard's beer. Is mm-hmm. it Belgium? Uh, Sure, someone's country. Okay, okay. <laughs> yeah. I, I know I'm gonna like mess all this up. Like I know all the dates are messed up, and like I don't want to say some country that's not in. But yeah, yeah, okay, it's over there. Gotcha. Yeah, we had it. Mean, we just had that beer from Belgium or an import from over there. That was from oh, uh, from yeah. Nick, yeah, yeah Nick from Stones, Stones yeah, wearing his hat. Uh, thank oh, you for the hat, Um But yeah, that was legitimately one of the best beers I've ever had. Um, yeah, I, so. Liam's like a fairly big beer guy. You know, he, he enjoys a beer. Yo, shout out Liam. Uh, yeah, we don't yeah, give him yeah, enough props. Yeah, sure. He's the one that <laughs> helps with all the, all the video at the studio and everything. Um, but we, so we both cracked it open. We sipped it. And he, we both looked at each other. We're like, oh my God. Thank you, Nick. This is so, so good. So yeah, Belgium definitely has some, some legendary brews coming out of there. Definitely. Shout out Belgium. Also, Hardywood. So I brought this beer in specifically. This beer, is, Hardywood, is a brewery out in Richmond. It's one of the best tap rooms I've ever been to. If you've ever ever been to Root Down, and they have the old pinball oh, machines yeah, there. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's like that on steroids. It's like three times the size, but it's basically look kind of the same. Like, you walk in, there's graffiti all over the place. Cool. Pinball machines. Uh, kind of, It's kind of like Barcade. But they make awesome beer. It's like in this like industrial park in Richmond. Richmond's an awesome city. They make great beer there. It's super underrated, but Hardywood make they make great lagers. They make great great IPAs. But what they're known for is this gingerbread style that comes out every Christmas. Yeah. And now there's all these variations. I got this at Bottle Bar East. They have like a couple different variations there. Um, but yeah, it is you know in an age where like people are overwhelmed with different types of craft mm-hmm. beer, this is a staple that you can go to every single time, and it's good. Yeah. That's awesome. I agree. And it's like it doesn't get enough attention. Yeah. Yeah. I completely agree. That's a great one. I also love the uh, number one, a perfect Christmas beer by a beer connoisseur quote, and uh, <laughs> like, and tastes like frigging Christmas. Our score one hundred from Beer Advocate. Nice. So, <laughs> some impressive reviews there. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> 
That's awesome. Maybe maybe someday it'll say uh, this beer is amazing by Brewdat Podcast. True, <laughs> true. <laughs> it is the, it, but you, yeah, you You'll know we made it there. Okay, I'm looking at you. I'm just uh, you can absolutely use that. It would be an honor. Um, but yeah, that's, that's a great one. Um, yeah, and then I guess I'll do one quick. I brought Ship Bottom's Abominable Snow Monster Ale. And I think this one's kind of cool because right now this is in the finals of our craft beer winter bracket. Yeah. So they're of the can label, right? Of the can art. So that's been something really fun. Yeah, and everybody's awesome. been participating yeah, in that. with honey, sugar, plums, figs, and cherries. Yeah, and it does not taste like it is 10%. I'll tell you that. Ooh, it's I really agree. good. Great yeah, artist over there. A lot of these there. beers are... Uh, you know, a lot of these, I know uh, Victor has Merry Monkey, and then Trogues has... Mad uh, Elf. Mad Elf. Right. You know, yeah, they all use a lot of these, like, heavy sugars and, like, all these other things. And they're like, this is, like, figs, honey, sugar, plums, cherries, and, like, a lot of that is just, like, fermentable sugar that's, like, more fermentable than malt. And it, like, gets these, like, 10% levels, but then also has, like, all this complexity of these fruits and, you know, this depth that you don't normally get off just, you know, straight pills or malt. Yeah. Yeah. So I have a question for you. Um, I know, so, so even bring it all the way back to the beginning, uh, leaving your job, uh, best beer you think you made at Victory? And would you admit what you think was the worst beer you made? The best beer I made was uh, this beer. It was a, a, almost like a Bud Light Lime clone. It was this light rice lager. That then I put like uh, lime flavor in it. It tasted like almost like a more limey sour, uh, Bud Light lime. Damn, I'm, I love Bud Light lime. So do I. It's and a it was, great beer, it, man. Great. It, it was it was awesome. I drank so many of them, and I love that beer. Um, and you know, like rice lagers are super hard to make, and it was like a perfectly clean rice lager with this like lime flavor, and I loved it. Um, and the worst beer I ever made was the first beer. Uh, which I actually made with Bill, Bill Kovalevsky, that came in and brewed with me. And <laughs> oh, I, I just didn't, like, the boiler was messed up, and I didn't have no foam. I, I didn't have uh, a way to, like, measure how strong the beer was, and I just, like, totally shit the bed, like, right in front of him. The beer was, like, <laughs> so bad, and I was, like, freaking out, running around, like, having a panic attack in front of him, and he's oh, just, like, man. calm down. It's just beer, like... We can fix this. Like, it's just yeah. one seven barrel batch of beer. Like, it's all right. And I was just like, I was so embarrassed. <laughs> oh, my Dude, God. Dude, that's scary as anything. <laughs> and every, the first brew on any system always sucks. Yeah. But, you know, to do it in front of, like, you know, like one of my heroes, like in the brewing, it was just like so embarrassing. And, like, I just spent the last year and a half because, like, you know, I had gotten hired during COVID and it didn't have happened to, like, uh, what is it, September 2021? So I had like a full like year and a half of like, in my mind, I was like, I'm going to make like the best beer in the entire world. And then just like <laughs> totally shit the bed. Like, <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, it's ever done with. Yeah. Oh, man. You got to go through those moments, you know? No, I mean, Builds character. Exactly. Builds character. Yeah, well played. Exactly. Well played. <laughs> yeah. Um, do we got anything else we want to talk about? Oh, is there, what what, what else? Is, I mean, you guys got the pot, the uh, passport. What else do you guys yep. have going on? Just huh. more videos, more content, supporting. Yeah, I just, I mean, we have the passport coming out, and then really just trying to continue to build who we are and what we're doing. You know. Nice. Yeah. So videos, be on the lookout at the Brudat podcast and at Brudat. I have some good beer content. Yeah, and uh, like we said before. Uh, crafted in Philly. Um, if you like what we do, uh, this is an e- literally just an easier way for you to. No, I think get this. Is, I think this is the start of something because I it when you guys first explained it to me, it didn't make much sense. But like everything that you guys do, you guys blow it out of the water. You guys surprise me. And now that you guys have all these people attached to it, it just makes so much sense to me now. I just don't have that type of vision, I guess. But it, I, I'm very excited for it. I think it's going to be a very cool thing that a lot of people are going to get involved with. And, you know, from here, I think you guys can do a lot of different things just with this kind of same concept. Yeah. With them and the fact that you guys are partnering with Let's Rally, I think there's a lot of potential there. Totally. Yeah. Man, we're so excited. Yeah. So, more to come. Yeah, more to come. You know, I'm sure we're going to talk. You know, like, I'm not going anywhere. I have a lot to say, but, you know, this was kind of like, I need to get this off my chest. Yeah. Uh, what I was saying, you know, I did just kind of quit last week, but, uh, yeah, lots 
Lots of stuff to come next year, but it's just I don't I'm not ready to kind of talk about anything yet. But yeah, you know, kind of I think I've said my piece. Yeah, yeah. I gotta say though, man, I mean, it's inspiring. I mean, we like came over to your place and just talked to you about your potential ideas for something and all the sketches, all like doodles and everything that you have for branding for beer. It's inspiring, seriously. So yeah, I have. I don't know like what I'm gonna do, but it's. Uh, you know, I, I know the, the biggest thing that I got from Sam and Alice in doing this was just kind of like they had this crazy concept and it, and it was less about, you know, like having the perfect plan or like figuring out what I want to do. Like, I don't know what I want to do. I don't know how exactly I want to do it, but it was just like they just went out and did it and they had this like confidence in themselves to like just kind of like create and do this. Yeah. And it's just like it feels like I just kind of like took this step like into you know the unknown but like but i this is what i'm trying to say like i i'm at a point now like with myself like i feel comfortable in myself to to kind of take this step and you know i'm just kind of excited i don't know what's going to happen but that's the best part man exactly that's so so exciting so yeah you know you you've already done this so we're kind of on this path together now and uh you know excited for the future yeah man and like you're around the right people. They're not going to let you fail. I mean, yeah. That's I mean, Allison just said it last time. Like, surround yourself with the right people. I'm, I'm hanging out with them most of the time now with Sam and Allison and you guys who are both starting their own thing. <laughs> you know, yeah. like, I don't have a lot of free time right now. And, you know, but my, my free time is spent around you guys who are creating your own things. So, um, yeah, just kind of excited about the future. So I don't really have anything to plug besides, you know, the Brudat podcast. Um, but if you want to follow me on at Richie's Hevlin, it's just my name. Um, it's all I got right now. Memes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, good memes to the people. I got, I got meme. Oh, I got <laughs> my, meme, my memes and my name. <laughs> with more to come, with a lot more yeah. to come. <laughs> exactly.